Welcome to exercise two for quick start corridor modeling for rail. In this exercise, we're going to create a corridor along the mainline track center line. First of all, we're going to select corridors, new corridor. On the feature definition, we're going to set a feature definition here of final. We're going to locate using the heads up prompt the corridor baseline and we're going to reset to use the active profile so that's a right mouse click. The name we're going to give to this corridor is mainline and then we're going to accept that with a left click. Once the template drop panel appears. This is where we're going to select the template that we're going to place along this center line to generate our corridor. We're going to access the template library to pick the template. So on the keyboard I'm going to select the Alt and the Down arrow key. And from the pick template window, under the templates for rail, I'm going to pick the single track with concrete sleepers template and I'm just going to OK that. I'm going to accept that with a left click on the heads up prompt and we're going to start this template drop at the start of the alignment. So I'm just going to select Alt on the keyboard to accept start position and accept it with a left click. And again, I'm going to now go Alt on the keyboard uh, to accept the end condition and a left click to accept it. The drop interval is going to be five meters. This is the number of times we're dropping the typical cross section or the template along our center line. And we do not have any other templates to place along this center line. So the minimum transition drop before is zero and the minimum transition drop after is zero. And then the software will process the corridor. As we've stated previously, the corridor will be generated in both 2D and 3D. In view number two, which is the 3D view, you can see the 3D extent of the corridor. But also you will be able to see the 3D model in the 2D view. Now to avoid confusion, we're going to switch off the 3D model in the 2D view. And to do this, we're going to go to the attach tools for referencing. And here you will see in slot three, the metric corridor mainline default 3D model. And we're just going to un display that model. If we window in in view number one to the start of the corridor, you will see this purple line, which is the extent of the template drop. You will also see these red lines, which represent the corridor handles. You've also got this object here, which represents the template drop handle. And if I window in a little further into the corridor, you will see these linear features. These are the linear features that are generated from the template points from the template itself. To access the properties of the template drop, you just need to select the template drop handle, wait for the context sensitive toolbar to appear, and go to the properties.
and you can see here here's the interval of five meters which you can change if you wish to change it here is the template that we use to generate the corridor here's the start and end station any of these can be amended using the properties panel also if we select one of the corridor handles and go to its properties you can see here you can actually change the name of the corridor should you wish to and you can also change the feature definition in this case we're going to leave them as designed we're now going to look at the corridor in the 3d view so we're just going to click on the 3d view to make it the active view and if you use the view rotate tool and we're going to rotate the corridor around right click to stop the rotation and then just use the window area uh, to window in again we'll just window in a little bit further you can see here that we have the entities that make up the 3D model. You've got your linear features in 3D. You've also got your component meshing. And you've also got the materials that are applied with the template itself. So it is a full 3D model. We are now going to look at the model in the cross-section view. To do this, we need another view. So I'm going to open up view number seven. And I'm just going to rearrange the view slightly because I want the cross-section view to, to sit below the 3D view. And I'm then going to hit the Arrange button. And you can just swiftly just rearrange these views so they look a little bit better and again hit arrange I'm going to now select the 2d view and I'm going to go back to corridors under review I'm going to select here dynamic sections and I'm going to select the open cross-section view now I'm prompted to locate the corridor or the alignment I'm just actually going to locate the corridor. It's easier to do it this way. So if I just window in and I'm going to pick the corridor. And then I'm going to click in the view that I've prepared for my cross sections. And there you can see you have the cross sections in view number seven. If you use this uh, next station button, you can see it's tracking in the 3D view. And also, if we look at the 2D view, and then go back to the cross-section view, you can see again, it's tracking in both views. You can, in the cross-section view, go to the properties of the view, and you can change the vertical exaggeration should you wish to do that so if you wish to exaggerate it more you can just type a vertical exaggeration in here and you can see it exaggerates the view that concludes exercise two if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.